when the mainstream press and the government says nobody could have predicted this, they're lying through their fucking teeth. We asked NHK's senior commentator Noriyuki Mizuno for some perspective on what's happening at Fukushima Daiichi. Here's some of what he had to say through simultaneous interpretation. It's not in a critical condition, but close monitoring must continue to avoid criticality. Melted uranium fuel is believed to be scattered everywhere in the number two reactor and its containment vessel. A neutron ray may be causing nuclear fission from time to time. So long as this reaction is localized and temporary, there is no need to worry about. But this time, the location of melted fuel or the amount of water inside is believed to be creating a condition suitable for continuous nuclear fission. Having said that, there is no change in the temperature or pressure in the containment vessel. TEFCO is pouring boric acid solution to suppress nuclear fission, so it's unlikely that huge amount of radioactive substances will be released from the reactor. The government has been saying it aims to achieve a state of cold shutdown by the end of the year. It means bringing the temperatures inside the reactor under 100 degrees Celsius with the release of radioactive materials substantially reduced. But if nuclear fission occurs, even temporarily, new radioactive substances will be released, so it's difficult to declare that a situation has been brought under control. First and foremost, the condition inside the reactor must be grasped in detail. How much melted fuel still remains inside the reactor? How much of it has fallen into the containment vessel? Is the fuel submerged in the water? Those kinds of things. Of course, we cannot see the inside of the reactor directly, so various computer simulations would help us grasp the condition to some extent. If we know that nuclear fission is likely, we can change the water injection method to prevent it from happening. The nuclear fission may be taking place in number one and number three reactors as well, as they also have melted fuel. So we need to know the conditions of other reactors in detail. That was NHK's senior commentator Noriyuki Mizuno. Wastewater discharged into Tokyo Bay from a cement factory has been found to contain radioactive cesium at much higher levels than the government set limit allows. The plant in Chiba Prefecture east of Tokyo uses ash from incinerators in the prefecture to produce cement. The prefectural government says the plant operator checked wastewater discharged from the plant into Tokyo Bay once in September and once in October. It found radioactive cesium at levels of 1,103 becquerels and 1,054 becquerels per kilogram, respectively. The levels are 14 to 15 times higher than the limit set by the country's Nuclear Safety Commission. The water had been used to clean filters which remove toxic materials from ashes. The operators stopped discharging the wastewater on Wednesday. The Chiba Prefectural Government has launched a survey of the seawater near the plant. A reactor at the Genkai nuclear plant in southwestern Japan has resumed power generation after nearly a month-long stoppage. It is the first reactor in the country to restart operation after the Fukushima accident. The resumption at the number four reactor at the plant in Saga prefecture took place on Wednesday afternoon. It had halted automatically on October 4th due to a procedural error. The plant's operator, Kyushu Electric Power Company, restarted the reactor on Tuesday after getting the go-ahead from the government's nuclear safety agency. The company plans to gradually increase the amount of power generated and return to normal operation by Friday. The reactor is scheduled to be stopped again in mid-December for a regular inspection. A nuclear energy expert says the presence of radioactive xenon in the number two reactor means that localized and temporary fission could still occur. Professor Koji Okamoto of the University of Tokyo Graduate School says substances from melted fuel are probably scattered around and are unlikely to undergo fission. But he says that neutrons from radioactive materials could react with uranium fuel or other substances possibly leading to localized and temporary fission. But Okamoto says a self-sustaining chain reaction that creates criticality is unlikely since vast amounts of boric acid have been poured into the reactor. He says the neutrons must be closely monitored 
to make sure fission does not take place. The professor also referred to a plan by the government and TEPCO to achieve a cold shutdown of the reactors by the end of the year. He says that if fission reactions are not under control, it would not be a cold shutdown. Okamoto says TEPCO must locate the melted fuel inside and outside the reactor and work to prevent further reactions. Workers at Japan's damaged nuclear facility are picking up some alarming readings. They've detected a radioactive substance that could signal Reactor 2 went into a temporary state of criticality when nuclear fission occurs continuously. Tokyo Electric Power Company employees detected radioactive substances Xenon-133 and Xenon-135 Tuesday in gas near a filter in the reactor's containment vessel. They also found signs of Xenon-135 on Wednesday. Radioactive Xenon is produced during nuclear fission. The half-life of Xenon-133 is five days, and that of Xenon-135 is just nine hours. TEPCO workers poured a boric acid solution into the reactor on Wednesday to suppress nuclear fission. Spokespeople for the utility say the temperature and pressure in the reactor basically remain unchanged. They say the reactor's cooling process is continuing. They expect to achieve a cold shutdown at Fukushima Daiichi by the end of the year as planned. Workers will keep monitoring the xenon levels in the number two reactor as well as checking the condition in reactors one and three. TEPCO is asking the Japan Atomic Energy Agency to re-examine the situation because it might have detected a different substance that has similar characteristics to xenon. In addition, Tokyo Electric said that radiation levels near the number two reactor were basically unchanged from the previous day. The utility says the reading at a monitoring post located about 500 meters northwest of the number two reactor stood at 293 microsieverts per hour as of 9 a.m., up only one microsievert from 24 hours earlier. It says the radiation level near the compound's west gate, about one kilometer from the number two reactor, was unchanged at 11.2 microsieverts per hour and that no neutron radiation was detected there. Readings taken at eight other monitoring posts around the plant on Wednesday were also identical to Tuesday's data. The operator of the Fukushima Daiichi nuclear plant says it cannot rule out the possibility that a temporary state of criticality occurred recently in the number two reactor. Criticality is when nuclear fission occurs continuously. On Tuesday, Tokyo Electric Power Company detected radioactive substances Xenon-133 and Xenon-135 in gas near the outlet of a filter in the reactor's containment vessel. The findings suggest that nuclear fission may have occurred recently. That's because Xenon is detected when there is nuclear fission. The half-life of Xenon-133 is five days and that of Xenon-135 is just nine hours. On Wednesday, TEPCO poured boric acid solution into the number two reactor to suppress nuclear fission. The utility says the temperature and pressure in the reactor has basically remained unchanged. TEPCO says the cooling process of the number two reactor is continuing and that it expects to achieve a cold shutdown by the end of the year as planned. It says it will keep monitoring the xenon levels in the number two reactor as well as checking the condition in reactors one and three. TEPCO also said on Wednesday that radiation levels near the number two reactor were basically unchanged from the previous day. The utility says the reading at a monitoring post located about 500 meters northwest of the number two reactor stood at 293 microsieverts per hour as of 9 a.m., up only one microsievert from 24 hours earlier. It says the radiation level near the compound's west gate, about one kilometer from the number two reactor, was unchanged at 11.2 microsieverts per hour and that no neutron radiation was detected there. Readings taken at eight other monitoring posts around the plant on Wednesday were also identical to Tuesday's data. The Fukushima catastrophe is probably the worst nuclear disaster in, in human history. It's certainly worse than Chernobyl. Uh, and all the time the children are getting more and more sick and, and, they're, and, and they're building up this level 
of radioactive damage, which will result in them getting sick and dying with cancer, heart disease, a whole range of, of, Ill, of illnesses that were all discovered after Chernobyl. And it's not as if this is something new. We know what's going to happen. We absolutely know what's going to happen. We have looked very closely at the health effects of people who were exposed to these same radionuclides after the Chernobyl accident in the same quantities. Not as many people, I have to say, which is why Fukushima is a worse disaster. The first thing we can do is we can actually measure the radionuclides ourselves, because frankly we do not believe what the Japanese government is coming out with. We don't think that they're right. I mean, I've measured more radioactivity in a car air filter than they are measuring in a child. And the car breathes air in the same way as the child breathes air. Two things we can do. The first thing is we can take them away from the areas of contamination and put them somewhere where it's reasonably safe. But that, re that, that leads us to another problem, because what's happening now, as I'm told, is that the Japanese government are trucking radioactive material from the Fukushima disaster area, where it's contaminated, all over Japan. And even as far south as the south of Japan, we're now getting reports of, of uh, radioactivity, uh, radioactive material being taken all the way to the south of Japan to be burnt. Now, what possible reason could there be for burning it as far away as that? I'll tell you the reason. It's really quite sinister and horrifying. The reason is this, that eventually when these children start to die from leukemia, from other cancers, from heart disease, from whatever, their parents are going to want to go into court. They're going to want to sue the Japanese government and they're going to want to have to say, these, in order to do that, these children were contaminated and that's why they've got high levels of cancer. But of course, the only way that they can say that they've got high levels of cancer is to have a control group in an area that's not contaminated for example, the south of Japan. So I believe that the project to take this material and burn it all over Japan is to destroy all of Japan, is to increase the, the, the cancer rate in the whole of Japan so that there will be no control group to which you can compare these children in the Fukushima area. So that's that point. So the second thing we can do is we can try and block the ingress of the radioactivity into the child's body. Now we know that we can do this with iodine because iodine goes to the thyroid gland. We give them stable iodine, or at least we're supposed to. It turns out the Japanese government didn't. Um, and then it stops the bad iodine, the radioactive iodine, from binding to the same sites. And thus you can do the same thing with the other radionuclides. For uranium and plutonium and strontium-90, which are the most serious, and all of which they're not measuring, incidentally, and none of which can be measured with a whole body counter because they're alpha emitters or beta emitters, we can block that attachment to the DNA by giving large amounts of calcium and magnesium. And we're also working on another tablet which will block the ingress of cesium-137. Now in order to do this, we have set up a, an organization in Japan called the Christopher Busby Foundation for the Children of Fukushima. And it has a website and it's all in Japanese and it's all being done by a colleague of mine who contacted me from Japan Called James, called James Grand. Uh, in addition to this, we are going to purchase a large number of highly sophisticated radiation measuring devices for, uh, from Europe, from suppliers in Europe and, and suppliers in the Ukraine. And we're going to make these um, devices available to the parents of children to measure the concentrations of these substances in the food and also to supermarkets, and we will measure the substances ourselves. We will set up a laboratory in, 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 in Japan so that people can bring these substances to the laboratory and find out the truth about the concentration of radionuclides in these substances. So these are the things that we want to do and we want you to help us to do this in any way that you can. This is an operation to save the children of Fukushima because we do not believe that the Japanese government is doing anything to save the children of Fukushima. They are operating on a principle which is the principle of saving not the children of Fukushima, but the international nuclear industry. And this is disgraceful.